Hello, thank you for having me on your 10 minute segment, The Daily Five. And hopefully I can show a different twist, some of the things that I look at from more of a practical trading standpoint. I'm sure most of you are very sophisticated chartists and have seen the charts of the long-term technicals and so forth. But we're going to start off this session just looking at a few things that uh, caught my eye for the uh, bottom of the sell-off that ended in the third week in March. And what I try to look for is aberrations or unusual signs of activity. And what you are seeing here is a chart. The data feed that's providing the ticks is actually courtesy of CQG. But uh, I started seeing these very high closing tick readings. And uh, if you see this um, area that I've got in the box right here, these are all line charts on a daily basis showing the closing level of these ticks. And you can see the the low close down here and the high closes up here. And what caught my eye is you can see here this third week in March that we had this unusually high closing tick reading, almost plus 900. And I went back and looked at my data and I saw only one other high tick close re closing uh, for the whole year, you can see here all of 2019. And as you recall, we had that nice blast off bottom back in the first week in January. Now here's another thing is that the ticks are highly correlated with breadth readings. So in general, if you're looking at a day with a very high breadth reading, you'll see a positive skew in the ticks. But I thought that this was unusual because we started to see a series of these tick readings. And I'm sure that most of you that are familiar with the concept such as breadth thrust, this was uh, starting to feel like that. So what I did is I went back through all of the data for the previous 15 years and the only other time that we had such a cluster like this of high tick readings on the close, even if the market had sold off in the last 30 minutes, you were getting this high tick reading on the close, was right at that time that we made that 2009 bottom after that huge debacle. So I thought this was worth uh, bringing up to you because it, it merits going and doing more work on, on these ticks and looking at the closing ticks. Mind you, different data feeds uh, provide different tick readings because it is not an exchange transmitted piece of data. But let's look at the next slide and see how some of these pieces start to fit together. If we move on to the next slide, this is one of my favorite uh, market sentiment uh, readings. And uh, I remember hearing Ned Davis give a talk in Miami about 16 years ago, and at that time, I don't know if this is still the case, but he had commented that this was one of his favorite things to look at in terms of sentiment readings. And you can see it's the AAII uh, bull and bear readings that only come out on a weekly basis. And so you can see at this right-hand side of the chart down here, this heavy bearish sentiment that built up and we saw that with the uh, put call ratios, investors intelligence, lots of different uh, formats to display market sentiment. And what I thought was so unusual with our current situation and why we might have a bid still underneath the markets was that despite this rally that we've had up in these S&Ps, you can see that we still have a very, very subdued tone to these sentiment readings. And historically, I like to look for uh, the swings from one extreme to the other extreme. And I think that we still have a ways to go with the sentiment 
before you even begin to see the glimmer of hope in, in these readings. And this is despite the fact that yesterday on the NASDAQ, we had 19 new all-time highs. So I was like, wow, you know, there's a dichotomy here, this bifurcated market. Now, I can show you the good, all this accumulation that we saw and these uh, still bearish sentiment readings. Let's look at the bad just so that we can keep an open mind here. And this is simply the seasonality on the SPY. It's a proxy for all these uh, market indices. And I love the way with the stock charts, we can go back and look at periods of data. So I just set it back 13 years. And you can see here that April tends to be the most bullish month of the year. And we are unfortunately just coming off that very bullish seasonal period. And we sort of dip down for the next one to two months. So that's gonna be the headwind now that this market would have to um, fight against. So still bullish sentiment, had bullish accumulation reading, but now we have a negative with the seasonals. And I just thought it of note that I should throw up the seasonals on the gold because I have yet to meet one bear in the gold market over this last month. And uh, I've, I've seen everybody make the thesis as to why we'll be insanely higher. And it just sort of made me scratch my head because when you have sentiment that shows or rather news that shows things like the Fed pumping wazoo amounts of money and gosh, we're just gonna devalue the currency and gold is the only place to be. And you never hear the other side of the coin. For example, central banks may need to raise money by selling gold or a host of other reasons. I don't, uh, I don't dig that deep into the fundamentals. But for all those gold bulls out there, you usually start to see a better lift in the seasonal profile. You see going into this July and August. So uh, just be mindful that it could still be a little sloppy market on a seasonal bias uh, for the next month or two. And then lastly, I have two uh, stock charts that I wanted to show you, actually one stock chart and a chart of crude. And I was going to put up Intel because my brother has worked for Intel for 25 years. And I saw him just out in California a few weeks ago. And he was telling me that they absolutely cannot keep up with the demand for the chips that go into laptops. Because now you have this huge demand for companies to provide their employees with the means to work from home. But only about 50% were really set up to do so. So they were working with Dell and Lenovo and Hewlett Packard and all to try and uh, procure enough chips to build laptops. And I just thought that the chart of AMD was better relative strength. And the other thing I wanted to point out is one of my favorite patterns that I look for when you have these deep dives in the uh, daily charts, and that is the simple little buy divergence here. So we had a loss of momentum on this way down combined with the accumulation combined with the bearish sentiment and an extremely positive seasonals and voila, that was the outcome. So it just reminds us that we do have sort of two parallel economies here. You know, one is in the dregs, airlines obviously, and uh, you know, groups that will stay in the dregs for a while, but free yourself from these generalizations such as bull market and bear market. And instead, I try and just put it relative to the individual market uh, or group or sector that is there. And lastly, crude. Now I trade crude every day and I have to tell you, trading that May uh, futures, I stopped trading the May two days before it went below zero. And never in a million years would I have thought that I would see a minus $40 print. So uh, just 
never say never. But the thing that I wanted to comment on with this crude, and of course, I'm looking at July, but when I look at uh, uh, this market, it's really important in these commodities to take a look at the back months as well. And this ginormous bar that we saw right here where the Saudis came out with that news that they were going to flush this market down, this big bar here, most of these back months are back up in the middle of this bar. So uh, keep in mind that this temporary glut, okay, really is something on the short end here. And what I look for on a technical basis is back to this 310 oscillator, and you can see this slow line here that is a moving average of the faster line. And anytime we see this slow line have a divergence like this, this is really a buy divergence on the weekly charts. So if you go down to your data and look at a crude chart and instead look at the weekly data, and you might have to do some futzing with the continuation mode there, you will see that you indeed had a lovely uh, buy divergence on here. So I think that uh, ultimately this market will trade back in through this range here until you work off a little bit of this supply and uh, don't get too caught up in looking at bear flags, if you will, on the front end of this uh, market, okay? So uh, it's more important to make sure that when you have these unique situations, keep in mind, just like we do with the S&Ps, that it's a discounting mechanism. It's trying to look out six to nine months from now. And of course, the cost of carry with the cash commodities has their own dynamics. But it's a reminder in general that uh, the market is trying to look out, the stock market is trying to look out nine months down the road. And uh, hopefully these, uh, this little bit of gloom that's overhanging this market will lift sooner than later, even though it's a process. And those are just some things to think about, a little bit of smattering of things that all sort of unite among this common theme of number one, the uh, technicals with the accumulation and the sentiment and the seasonals. And then number two, where might, might we be, you know, six months from now? And uh, so with that, thank you for having me on, Rachel. I just want to remind you, my website is lindarashke.net. I haven't been posting articles very uh, frequently as of the last couple months, but I do try to keep a blog there and I do have my book for sale. You can order this only on my website. I'm not helping out Amazon in this particular environment. I don't think it needs my help, but if you go to my website, you can read the first chapter of the book and then make up your mind from there. Thank you again. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.